And you, you touched on something that I was going to ask you about, which is um, how does uh, you know, this new runtime differ from alternative runtimes? Like you talked about VA, you talked about the one that comes with Mozilla, but there's also been fun. Uh, that's been quite a you know, big, um, I guess, a, a big hit recently as well. Uh, you yeah. know, it made a lot of noise uh, for being more compact, more lightweight, and uh, faster as well. So I guess uh, is your answer, you know, if I was to ask you what's, what differs LRT from something like Bun? Uh, what would you say? Yeah, so that's that's a really good question, uh, and and these are like fundamentally different approaches. So uh, LLRT is not meant to uh, compete with with either Bun or Node because it takes a very different approach that obviously has some some drawbacks. Um, but if you start at the you know what's the fundamental difference? The fundamental difference is mainly the engine. Uh, and uh, another fundamental difference is the approach that we take. So if we start with Node, uh, it's an extremely capable project, and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm very amazed by how far they've come with Node since I've started using it more than ten years ago. Uh, it's very stable, and it works across a, a you know a, a large chunk of operating systems, even you know mobile devices, Raspberry Pis, everything and uh, everywhere is, seems to be able to run Node which is uh, a part of their strategy. So their focus has been a lot on uh, both growing the ecosystem and uh, having, uh, having be, being a project that it's easy to contribute to with a large of its code footprint being uh, implemented actually in JavaScript. And it supports a wide range of operating systems and devices. Uh, I think that that focus has shifted a bit now uh, to try to introduce more performance and startup and things like that as well. But uh, backwards compatibility is also something that is extremely important for the Node project because there are you know millions of millions of projects that depend on it. So it's very easy to come in with, uh, with with an approach that I have done and say that it's it's you know massively faster in some use cases because I don't have that legacy uh, and I don't have to support all those devices and I don't have to support all those APIs, etc. So. Um, um, I, I would, it would be not be fair to, you know, to say that this is, you know, uh, so much faster because it's better. It's, it's a very different approach, and it's not meant to compete with, with that, that, that project. Uh, and then we have Bun, which is also an, you know, an uh, engineering marvel and an achievement. Uh, I think Jared that has made Bun. I mean, I listened to a lot of podcasts when he's been uh, speaking and presenting, and I, I've looked at. Some, what we have, and I used it also uh, myself, and it's a very, very capable uh, runtime. Also, a bit of a different use case, it's more general purpose, and it also uh, distinguishes itself by being an all-in-one toolkit, which, uh, in contrast to Node, that you have to have external external uh, packages and binaries for, for doing like package management with NPM, or installing dependencies, bundling, running TypeScript, etc. All of this is baked into one single toolkit, which make it, makes it a fantastic developer experience. Um, so where LRT sits aside is that it's purposely built, again, for, for serverless environments. It can run on other, on other environments than, than Lambda, uh, but it's built for environments with, with low resources. Uh, so I don't want it to, to run TypeScript, and I don't want it to have too big of an API footprint because that will add to the start time. So for instance, uh, imagine that we add, you know, or if we wanted to put uh, TypeScript support in Lambda, we can pull in a, a Rust dependency that does the transpilation on the fly, and then we load it, let that uh, transpiled uh, JavaScript, uh, or that transpiled TypeScript into the engine and execute it. But that will add significant cold start time, which is a trait that we really want to avoid. So we'd rather see that you keep your ex existing tooling I mean, you can even use Bun uh, to uh, bundle and package JavaScript for LLRT, right? Um, if you just use the transpilation, and so the, the focus has kind of been to keep keep the, the core extremely lightweight and do do the uh, computationally intensive things as much as possible at compile time. So that's why focus has been to keep a lighter API. However, right now it's very light. You know, there's it's nowhere near um as as feature complete uh, as we want it to be nor is it nowhere near uh, supporting as many apis where i have a as large api footprint as neither bun or, or dino uh but again it's a, it's a bit of a different use case where we want to be 
eventually is to have what's what's called winter cg compliance so winter cg is a, is a working group that tries to um where it's an incentive to to have a shared common set of apis across different runtimes so across um runtimes running on cloudflare workers uh dino bun uh, I, i'm not sure if node is in there or not but to have um uh, a common set of APIs that that allows users to pick and choose basically what what satisfies their, their use cases. So in summary, LLRT sets itself aside by having a, a simpler, more lightweight approach, uh, but in trade off, you have a, a also less APIs that are supported. But with that being said, we try to make the APIs that we actually support as close to the node specification as possible. This has a couple of benefits. This will allow you to, you know, when you run into a corner, when you run into an API that you actually need, but it, it isn't supported or it isn't implemented, you can switch back to Node and your effort aren't wasted. And I think this is really important because I I don't want people to build specifically for, for LLRT, run into a corner, and then all of that job is, is wasted. It's, it's a better approach. Uh, I, I reckon it's, it's, it's a better approach to have something that tries to adhere to a specification already defined that allow you to switch back once you hit that corner. Uh, another very important distinction is that since the engine is, is uh, even though it's very capable and supports ECMAScript 2020, it doesn't contain a just-in-time compiler. The just-in-time compiler is a fantastic uh, and a very sophisticated piece of technolo technology, technological achievement that allows you to uh, compile and optimize JavaScript code on the fly and translating it to machine code, which will make it very, very efficient. However, that compilation and, and that translation of JavaScript code into na native machine code, it takes resources. It requires a lot of memory and it requires a lot of CPU. Uh, that's why you may see in a very resource constrained environment that has a short lifetime, you will see spikes. You can see some latencies going up for an obvious reason, even though your payload was almost the same or your event looked almost the same, but you have a latency spike. And this is mainly because it's just in time compiler. Um, it has to evict, uh, evict compiled code and methods from its compile cache. So it's a very complicated piece of, of uh, uh, technology. It works really well for long running tasks where, where it can find you know, the best ways how to optimize your, your JavaScript functions while running for a long time. But it, it, um, it takes away some of, of some of that precious compute that we can use to execute the code uh, in order because it, it needs that for, for compiling the code. So, so both uh, Dino, Dino and Ban are, are using it and it has, of course, significant performance benefits uh, for longer running tasks or loops that iterate over hundreds of thousands of um, you know objects or call functions 10,000 100,000 a million times uh, we won't, won't see near the performance in LRT since it's purely what is called interpreted so what you see on every line is basically what is get executed by the engine so that's also fundamentally different 